Academy. Now then, Craft Academy is bringing you fabulous techniques and education, this time particularly with patchwork and quilting. We're now moving on to our intermediate section with the lovely Jenny Raymond, and we are going to cover crazy patchwork and the Dresden plate. So Jenny, this is moving on a slight level. So once yes. you've established the basics. Once you, once you know how to do the basics, the trouble is though, Dawn, you can have lots of bits of fabric. What do we well, you've do got lots with of bits them? Of fabrics, Jenny. You see, <laughs> lots of them. Right, there is a really rather neat template. Let's okay. have the good old bit of paperback called Simply Crazy. Now, the reason why this is rather neat is cutting an uneven-sided shape is one of the hardest things we as human beings have to do. Yes, we we can cut squares, uh -huh. we can cut circles, but to cut something that is a five-sided shape is difficult. This particular template gives you the wherewithal to have four different sizes of this particular shape. Now, okay. how you would use it? You could cut round the template uh -huh. itself completely. So I may have the template yes. back and literally just hack round the template. Get it round the right way. We have the fabric up the other way. There we go. Cut round the template and use that. Perfect. Or you can slide the template over a bit and cut yourself out a slightly smaller version okay. of the same thing. What I'm going to do now is show you how to do crazy patchwork. Now this, I think, is something great if you have got lots of fabrics of children's clothes because yes. they don't have to be specific. Nope, You're not pattern matching nope, at all. Nope. Okay. You're just literally working I around. love this idea. So taking my centerpiece here, the trick with you doing crazy is yep. you need all the bits. So you've got all these scraps now, of these fabric. Now these can be different sizes They though, can be different they? sizes, okay. they can be different widths, they can be yep. different materials. Take strip number one, yep. lay it right side down and all you're going to be doing is making sure your strip goes from one side of the underneath section to the other. Underneath the sewing machine, sew down a short distance. Don't sew all the way because you're going to cut this strip flush with the bottom of the block. So okay. cut it off, just yep. hack it off. There's no precision in crazy patchwork whatsoever. When you get to the bottom, if you can rescue your thread saver and stick it back on again, Sometimes it's called an oni and an offy. It comes from the north where they used to call it a monkey or a donkey. Really? Right, yes. It carried the threads. Okay. Right, now you're going to open it out. Right. Take the next strip, and it okay. could be a different size, it could be a different colour, it could be anything you liked. Put it down. And the idea is, is your strip's got to go from this end to the other end of the piece that's underneath. You go okay. from end to end. Okay. So lay so it again, on there. Pop that under the machine. You can pin it in there if you wish. So off your little scrap. So down a bit. Stop before you get too far. Because this way you can just keep on sewing. Down to the bottom. Off the bottom. Rescue thread saver monkey, donkey, call and it what you will, going. and just keep going. And you keep on adding bits, constantly working round. So okay. the next piece will go yeah. there mm -hmm. and there. Keep on adding it and adding it and adding it, and eventually you'll end up with a sort of lump. Mm. So do you keep going to however big you want yes. that to be? So or if you want it I'd to be a 12 inch cushion? You keep on going. What's okay. quite a useful idea then is to take your square, have we got the six inch square there? You do? Or indeed. And if you were going to have six inches, you could get your square out every so often. Think, I've got to make it a bit bigger. So okay. you could use one of these. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the nine inch one there to square it up. And yes, I can get a reasonable size square out of this. Because so actually, you can see a centre point there. Yes. So you can yep. get a bagel in the middle where there. That's going to be, yeah. Let's get it the right way around. Pop the square on top. And what I'm basically going to look at is look through the square to see what size square I can get out of this. I can get out of this, if I look right the way through it, it's seven and a half there, seven and a half there. Can I get seven and a half inches? Yes, I can do a seven and a half inch square out of this. Cut up one side, just like we did in the beginning. Cut across the other side. That gives me my nice, neat right angle. Cut through the end there. Flip the fabric round bring my ruler in and square it off. So seven and a half inches there and seven and a half inch down the bottom there and I can square it off. That wasn't a very good seven and a half inches, there we go. Could have cut that a little bit bigger. 
and we've got a block that I can now use. Lovely, that's fab. You might want to work with strips by themselves or mm -hmm. you might also want to do it directly onto wadding. And what we've got here is I've done the crazy patchwork onto a bit of wadding. And again, it's exactly the same technique. You put, start off in the middle, you keep on adding your strips, stitch, and what's known stitch and flip. So what, do you, leaving the wadding behind there, so you're stitching here. Yes. But because you've got the wadding, you've got that extra it's dimension. It's actually and, quilted. And it's sometimes to called it as well. quilt as you go, yes. Mm. The technique is stitch and flip, because you stitch it and flip it, yep. but it's called quilt as you go, because you've actually got the wadding ah, there again. So you've got a little bit of bounce in it as well. And what's more, again, one can put the square on the top and you can square it up. See this one, I can get probably almost a nine, eight inch square out of it. Let's go for an eight inch square. Perfect. Pop it on the top there, guard off your cutter, cut up one side, cut along the other side, flip the square round, replace the ruler, and it's all wonderfully nice and neat and tidy. There we go. So this is using the crazy patchwork, which is that intermediate level. It's giving you the possibility to do something a little bit quicker. Then we also have the, um, the next one, which is the Dresden the plate. Dresden now plate. this one looks a bit more well, it's a bit different, isn't it? This is very. I need to get. Just let me get rid of clear the decks. Down. I will. I'll show everybody the Dresden plate. Well, we That's get what some it's of this out of the like. way. There and this go. is a very popular template to create really beautiful patterns as well. Right, and we've even got a mini version of that as well. Let me have that. I'll grab the whole lot over there. Okay, That's it sorted down that little lot as well. Okay. Right, okay. the Dresden plate. Now this is very different. We've okay. looked at so far basically pieced blocks that mm -hmm. everything has just been pieced. The Dresden plate is one of those blocks that's a pieced and applied block. Okay. Where all the sections will get joined together to create the piece and in order to finish it off it will be applied to something. So we've now gone into the realms of applique because yes. the patchwork and quilting world encompasses not only patchwork which is the piecing of the bits together, the Americans call it piecing, we call it patchwork, but then there is the applique which is the applying of shapes to a background fabric okay. and the Dresden plate is one of those designs that is a piece design that's also an applique. Mm -hmm. The template that you use to make it with like all the other templates we've shown you so far, is multi-sizes. You can do a wide range of different sizes with this, and it just depends on how big a plate you want okay. as to how much of the template you actually use. I've chosen to use a five and a half inch strip. So I've cut my strip. Once again, I've got my fabrics folded yes, in half. Yeah. There's a template, where's it gone? There it is. Lay the template on the top here, and I'm going to put the edge of the template on the edge of the fabric. Not so easy to see. First of all, I'll just level off the end because you wouldn't have a neatly cut end. So level off the end. It's not dead straight. Pop your ruler on the top. One of these rulers should be at your hand all the time because you're going to need it constantly. Having got a nice straight end, lay your temp Dresden plate on the top there. Thank you. Position it so that one end of the Dresden plate is on the edge of the fabric, the other end is aligned with the other side of the material. Take your rotary cutter, cut up one side, remove that. To just cut two of them, flip the fabric flip over okay. and cut the other side. Now there's a really neat trick to how we do the Dresden plate. To make the plate I've got here, with this particular template, you are going to be making 20 sections. Right. There are other templates that will make Dresden plates with less sections. Okay. So this one has 20, so you will need 20 pieces cutting out. What you do with all the pieces is the piece gets folded right sides together. Mm -hmm. Now, it has a wide end here. You're going to fold it right sides together and you want to sew across the end here quarter of an inch seam allowance as we've got right there, quarter of an inch. When you've done that, it will pay you to just take the point of the seam here, just off the fabric, not off actually the shape itself, simply to reduce the bulk when we turn it through, so knock the point off. Mm -hmm. I like to very gently press it so you get a crease down there, open it out, finger press the top open, get your fingers inside there and finger press. Okay. Now you're going to turn it right side out. 
And when you turn it right side out, a little gadget that's really useful is the bamboo pointer. Mm -hmm. Stick the bamboo pointer up to get yourself a good point there. Okay. Now, it will pay you to repress it. And here is where the clover iron, which is somewhere around, it's not on, so don't worry about it. Now, when you are using the clover iron, please do not do it on your cutting mat. This is purely to show you the neat adaptability of the clover iron, because that small head is just enough to iron that down mm, nicely. It's worth investing in one. If you use it. a great big iron, sometimes you can stretch the pieces. Mm -hmm. You will give this a gentle press, and it's going to end up looking something like that, all nice and neatly pressed on the back. You need to do exactly the same thing with your other colour. So I've got a green one and I've got purples and greens. I'm going to make mm -hmm. my Dresden plate from. I've got 10 of these and 10 of those. When you come to put them together, put them right sides together, and you're going to sew down one side of the piece. Now, the trick is to not start at the very edge here and sew onto it. You want to start on it and go back. Okay. Because I want to make that seam there really strong. So underneath the sewing machine, pull the thread saver to the back a bit and start down a little. So we're starting down a little. Run the machine backwards. And this machine goes backwards by pressing the knob there. Very often on your sewing machine, it will have an arched, yes, uh, like a U shape. Turn, yeah. Go to the very edge and then come back again down the side. So I've locked the stitching on the top there. When you get to the bottom, sew onto your little thread saver. There we go. And you're ready to go again. Now, you're going to do this with all of your pieces, and we're going to sew them together in sets of two. So you sew them together in sets of two. Now, word of caution, top tip this. When you're sewing your sets of two together, have them all the time so the same colour is on the top. So you get the formulation <laughs> of the you get the formulation. Colours. And basically what is going to happen is you're going to go around stitching them in sets of two, and then we join our sets of two into sets of four. Okay. Because there are 20, you will have five sets of four. So okay. you will then join your five sets of four together to make the entire design. Okay. And here we have the Dresden plate in itself. Now, the trouble is with the Dresden plate is it's got a hole in the center. Okay. To cover up the hole in the center, you're going to need a circle. And we've got some really good circle tools down there. Underneath there, there's a variety of circles. Which I'll bring in. That's lovely. Okay. You have the circle cut, which will give you a variety of different sizes of circles. So it's simply a question of measuring the hole and deciding how big a center you want. You can have any size you like, you just can't have that big, yes. which will be a little silly. Mm -hmm. So you've got the circle cut, or you have a variety of other templates which will give you very different sizes of circles. I think these are very useful because, of course, then you could do your Suffolk puffs you as well. You can do your Suffolk puffs, you can do they're all sorts great. of things, and yes. they're great for designing and anything like that. Wonderful. So decide on how big the middle is going to be. Okay. And somewhere here we have a completed centre. There he is. Okay. Now, I'm going to choose to do this the old-fashioned way. Right. This is the English piecing way over something. Yep. And I'm using a piece of card, so I've cut some card out the size of circle I want. Yes. I've cut a bit of fabric out, a good quarter of an inch to almost half an inch bigger than the card. Using double thread on my needle, I have gathered around the edge of the fabric. Mm -hmm. Pull it up nice and tight and cast off, so to speak. So that's giving you a perfect it's circle, giving me a it's perfect hard, circle. isn't it, to yes. sew a perfect circle onto here? If you don't have a perfect circle in the middle, it, your oh, eye so gets... So the card template is really helping yes. with this. Yes, yeah. and it will, okay. it will make it nice and perfect. This will then be applied to the centre. Okay. It could be applied with stitch by hand. It could be applied with one of the small applique stitches there are on the yeah. machine. When you sewn this to the very middle, let's come to the, here's one I did earlier, put that down there. I notice you do tend to sew yours by hand, don't you? Yes, yeah. yes. There is my Dresden plate has been applied yeah. and the cardboard so should out. come out through the centre nice and easily. Perfect. Right, it's at this stage now when I can apply it to its background square. If I wanted just a 12 and a half inch square, I could simply cut round the big ruler. But if I wanted to cut a bigger square, then it's not a bad idea to use one of the rulers the squares in conjunction with a bigger ruler. You see, you can then create a bigger square very easily by getting them, so it's quite a nice idea to have more. Perfect. Right, 
to get the Dresden plate exactly in the center of my square, if I take the square I'm going to put it on and I press it in half and in half again, and also press it on the diagonals, so I've pressed it that way, that way, this way, that way, it will give me creases that will allow me the chance to put my plate on the top there and align the seams of the plate with the creases on the fabric and I'll know it's bang in the middle. Perfect. This will then get pinned in place and you can apply it round the edge there. So then would you hand stitch that around there? You can most certainly hand stitch okay. it around there. But if you don't like hand stitching, there's no reason why you couldn't use a small zigzag around the edge. Okay. Now, the Dresden plate is by itself a classic design. Mm -hmm. We've used 20 sections. If you wanted to, you could use just five of them. And Dawn, if you have just five of them, you can make something called a grandmother's fan. So five of them together. Mm -hmm any size square you like, five of them go across the corner there. That's the play. And to fill in that section, mm -hmm. you need a quarter of a circle. And the nice thing about it is that the circle cut template will give you a quarter circle. Where have we put the circle cut template? You've got it there. No, the, the, um, the hard one, the acrylic one, that's it. Because on this one, it has your quarter circles here and you can choose to cut out the size of quarter circle that you actually oh, I want. See what you mean. Yes. So this one is brilliant because it does quarter circles okay. as well as whole circles. Lovely. Thank you. Jenna. All you would do to your grandmother's fan is you take the grandmother's fan, lay it onto its background square, cover up the little hole. I've used cardboard on top and you end up with a fan shape. Now, you could use these to make all sorts of different designs. You could have them wiggling their way across the fabric like that. Ah, oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Rotate and them. Rotate them. They could be done as corners. You can make it look like a little butterfly there. You can have one one way, one the other way. It's a really rather nice design just to finish things off, perhaps put in the corner. Now, this was a 20 section Dresden plate. Can you do it with any other template? And the answer to that is this one. If you wanted a 12 section Dresden plate, mm -hmm. the 30 degree triangle does exactly the same thing. It works in precisely the same way. Cut your wedge shapes, sew across the end just as we've shown you. You will only need 12 of them, so don't try and fit 20 together. When you've sewn across the end there and you join them together, Dawn, you will end up with something that looks a little bit like this one. Which is just beautiful, Jenny. And so. the world of patchwork, Dawn, is being open to you. I mean, we've, we've only touched on something that could take you many years to go, but once you've got the bug, you'll be raring to go. Well, these are just a few cushions, aren't they, from the Dresden plate? Dresden plate, here, that's a 20 section lovely. there. And I like this, where you've just sort of nipped the little fabric and tucked it Tuck underneath. Tucked little squares underneath, which just gives it a little bit of added extra. And if you make the round centre nice and round, it will deceive the eye to any little imperfections that are there. That one's got a bit of yarn applied to the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And then you can do it with the 30 degree one and make up 12 sections. So you really can explore the Dresden plate in its varieties as well as you doing it as for the grandmother's fan. Um, absolutely, so many beautiful designs around us. We've only got a, a couple of minutes left, Jenny, unfortunately. So at future shows, obviously, we will well, actually go on to more advanced techniques for you, but this established patchwork quilting for you. Are there any other tips you'd like to give anybody, Jenny, if they're just starting out in the world of patchwork quilting? Washing fabric. Okay. Right, when it comes to washing fabric, this is a huge debate. Do you wash or do you not wash? Before. You've... Beforehand. Okay. The answer that I would say, I don't wash beforehand simply because I don't have the time to wash beforehand. Okay, the yeah. only time I would wash beforehand you is You mean if the fabric, not the fabric, yourself, of course. No, 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 no. I occasionally wash myself. <laughs> uh, the only time I would wash beforehand is if I am working for a child. Then I would most certainly wash the dressing to make certain there was nothing nasty in the material. Okay. The problem if you don't wash the fabric is it can shrink and you are going to run risk of the fabric shrinking and also the colours running. Okay. So if you take that risk, then when you do wash your fabric, your finished article, it needs to be done in a low temperature, wool wash, and put one of those colour catches in the to stop it from The running. majority of fabrics that you do tend to buy in fat quarters are 100% cotton, though, they aren't are they? They are indeed. Which... And if you want to work with 100% cotton dawn. Yeah, which Because is if fat. you work with polyester, 
Um, it moves, it doesn't to hold a crease, and it's just not nice to work with. You can use but if, silk. You, if you do want to use up some of your old clothing, though, as we discussed at yes. the top of the show, to make a heritage quilt, I guess just wash it on a cold wash. Yes. Or you yes. will have washed those. You will have washed those lots of times. You'll you won't have the problem. Times, it's when you, you buy the new. It's a new fabric that has caused the problem because this, if I were to wash it, might shrink. Yeah. And of course, if it shrinks, all those little pieces are going to get dragged in. The snag, though, is if you wash it, you take the dressing out so it's soft and floppy. Okay. And it's nowhere near as easy to work with. So my advice would be is if you feel you ought to wash it, wash it on a cool wash. Iron it lightly. And when mm -hmm. you iron it, you press it. You don't rub the iron okay. over it as though you're ironing nice somebody's shirt. Nice and firm shirt. pressing. Nice and firm pressing. Put a bit of spray starch on. And that will... Well, wow. Jenny, thank you so much as ever. You are an amazing lazy lady and you have so much to bring to us in patchwork and quilting. And um, thank you so much for your knowledge. And thank, thank you. you to all of you for watching. It has been Craft Academy. We're going to have future shows for you, which will go into much more levels. But I hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope it's tempted you into the world of patchwork and quilting. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.